Hi, uh, Hardianos. We are joined today by Andy Donaldson. At Andy Swimming. Mm, who right. is uh, attempting the Ocean 7 Challenge. Yeah. I think that's what it's called. That's is that right? It. Yep. Yep, cool. No one's done it before. Ever. In a year. In a year. In a year. In a year. He's world record no holder. <laughs> yeah. um, Winner of the Rotto Swim, we learned. Yes. Uh, yeah. Before we actually uh, get into exactly what we spoke about, today's episode is brought to you by Raunchy. Shout out Raunchy Brewing. It is the beer that actually tastes good. It's actually good. We got, there's Chicks. Chick, we, there's a nice Chicks one. Yep. What's it called? Chicks Flicks or something? Chicks with Dicks. Chicks. No, no, it's well, not, that's the 2023 version. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, it's Chicks. We got Two Stroke. There's an Irish Stout. Uh, yeah, Sir Henry's. The Sir Henry's Irish Stout is bloody awesome. Yeah. But uh, the lager is definitely my favourite. Um, so, Ian, thank you for all your support. Yep. And Raunchy, thank you for all your support. Love that. And shout out to the Patreons. Uh, we already did last week. Reese, Kelly and Amy, two new ones. Yep. There's some more material. More material. Some more content going up. We had to listen to you guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we were joined by Andy, uh, which is right next to us. And what did we <laughs> do? What did we talk about? <laughs> <laughs> So it's actually short-term like memory. Yeah, yeah, it's we, hard we, to condense. We um, we chatted about, oh, I suppose, all sorts of things. Life, um, swimming, the Ocean 7, yep. adversity, yep. having having reasons why and, and you know, having the mo- what motivates people to, to push through tough times. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good, some mental health stuff. Yep. And uh, some nearby shark attacks. Yes. Swimming with some the shark following you at midnight. 100%. Why uh, people <laughs> would swim through the hours of darkness and yeah. across yep. the channel swim. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, breaking world records. It was a bloody... Yeah. yeah, good episode. Perfect Very for fun. our listeners. They're going to love this one. So. We've got two Scots back to back in the new studio. I know. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Adam Gray's <laughs> pushing for a spot. As well. <laughs> we've had Mush and we've had Andy. So we're Perfect. doing the full international. Awesome. All right, let's get hard. Welcome to Hard Yarns Podcast. I am fucking fat. <laughs> <laughs> Anything Chris White says, please <laughs> disregard it. 5D is actually a state of being. It's a unity consciousness. That was Hard Yarns with me, Frankie Rose. So I'm going to throw it over to your co-host. Daniel Delby. And Cameron Brand. I would do this and then I'd gong. <laughs> <laughs> Free in attendance for the millions listening at home. <laughs> Let's get hard. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Camera Branch, everyone. Comedian on co host of this podcast, The Hard Yarns. Mm. I got called a comedian, Delby. Fuck yeah. There we go. Fuck yeah. Okay. Thanks for the help as well the other night. Let's go. Yeah. Fuck an oath, man. I'm great at writing other people's jokes. You did very well. Uh, first 10 minutes. First 10 minutes I've ever done as well. Yeah. And I felt very comfortable. Mm. It's a weird setup as well, hey? Oh, bro. <laughs> like, it's fucking the middle You're of it. Right in the middle. And, and there's a split. Yes. And you have to, there's a few people sitting in front. Yes. To like turn and turn. And that's people good. are eating. Yeah, that's not good. Whoever organized that, should, that shouldn't happen. Yeah. It, it, it was it, eventually, by the time I was on, it was good. But anyway. Actually, I'll do that in a Patreon, man. The number one, how to set up a comedy. That's night. a good idea. Yeah. Mm. The rules, the, un, the hidden rules. Behind a perfect comedy night. Mm. So that w- it was good fun, minutes. good challenge. Yeah. Um, first ten minutes done. Went Tick the box. First paid gig as well. Woo-hoo! Went swimming. That I didn't organise. Went swimmingly, you could say. Yeah, perfect. Yes. So we are joined today by Andy Donaldson. Uh, you what? Let's go through what you're doing because. <laughs> I was trying to explain this to someone the other day uh, and, yeah, I couldn't really put it into words correctly. So, yeah, explain what you're doing and, and, and how we're going about it. Yeah, so um, I'm an open water swimmer mm-hmm. um, from here in Perth, WA. And yeah, I can you tell by the accent. Have you got subtitles? For yeah. This? <laughs> yeah, Adam Gray will understand. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm an open water swimmer and over the last uh, 10 months I've been trying to swim the Sorry, world's yeah. uh, seven toughest channel swims yeah. all within the space of a year. Mm-hmm. And, and the goal is to use it as a vehicle to raise money for mental health. Yeah. Mm. So challenging your body and raising money for mental health. Sounds like the Hard Yards podcast. <laughs> We're going to get a lot <laughs> half of the Hard Yards podcast. <laughs> I challenge my mental yeah, health. I was about to say you challenge <laughs> To raise money. 
<laughs> to make life hard for yourself. Yeah. So um, open water swimming, is this something that, you know, has come naturally? Did, were you uh, a good swimmer at school? How do you become an open water swimmer? Mm. Uh, the open water stuff was um, more later in life. Um, I Obviously, I, I grew up um, not from here. I was um, born and raised in Scotland. Um, to be an open water swimmer over there was... Uh, Mm. Not really Not a thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> cold, yeah. cold as fuck. Turn turned into an icicle. So yeah, I, yeah. Um, I came through the system as a pool swimmer, and it was only really here uh, when I moved to Perth about ten years ago in 2013. Yeah, uh, that I that I got into the open water. Um, yeah, sick. It was it was actually a bit of an accident. <laughs> so you would have looked at like uh, my story this morning and gone, "You're a fucking pussy," because yeah. I swam this morning and oh, I thought it was the fucking beach. coldest oh, thing yeah. ever. Yeah, oh, man, that's brave. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, fuck. I had How no, do you accidentally? I genuinely had no testicles left. But anyway, yeah, sorry, go tell me. <laughs> How do you accidentally? You just like walk on the beach, like I'm going to tan, and you fall in, and you're like, oh, "I'll try." Well, There's lots of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually so. Um, I was I was watching all the guys here doing the surf life saving stuff. So yeah. Oh, yeah. you know you've got the guys doing the skis and on the boards and um, doing the surf races. Mm. Uh, I was watching this uh, Nutrigrain Ironman series yeah. and uh, watching all the guys doing these dolphin dives into the into the sea. Mm. And um, I was watching. I was like, oh, this is cool. This is what it means to be Australian. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I thought I would uh, <laughs> give it a try, and I, I you know went head on first. Bombing it into the into the water and uh, did a dive. <laughs> what into the sand? <laughs> into the sand. <laughs> and, uh, I was I was absolutely mortified. Um, yeah, we were on a swimming camp down to down to Smith's Beach down south. Um, I looked around just make sh- make sure that no one had you know <laughs> witnessed that. <laughs> yeah, um, but it ended up I, like my shoulder just completely took the brunt of it and oh, no. um, absolutely did in my my rotator cuff. Oh <laughs> no, that's so, not a great start. This was yeah, this was uh, sort of end of twenty thirteen. It was a few months out fr- uh, before the the Commonwealth Games qualifier meet for the Glasgow Col- uh, Commonwealth Games, so home home games for me. And you were trying to. And, he, and that was that was what um, what I've been working towards. It right. been a, a life do, a lifelong dream of mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, <laughs> all with an innocent, I, um, I completely derailed that preparation. Oh, and, how uh, devastating! Mm. Ended up uh, not qualifying for the team, but um, out of out of the back of that, um, my coach at the time was like, "Right, you 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 probably need to learn some some open water skills. Let's let's get you into the local surf club and, and get you trying mm. uh, some ocean swimming yeah. to." to prevent that from happening <laughs> again. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How close were you to, to making the games? Were you up there with your times and stuff? Or? Yeah, yeah, my times, um, I was I was a 200 metre swimmer. Yep. Uh, 200 freestyle was my main event. Um, at the time, I was sitting around that 151 mark for, for a long course 200 freestyle. Probably needed to be around 148 to, to be on the team. And I, I felt like I was there. I felt I was doing the work um, uh, to, to, to qualify. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Know, life, life throws you a curveball yeah. like that, mm-hmm. or you know, you do something dumb and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you create the curveball yeah. yourself. But um, because yeah. swimmers notoriously, you guys are up early, swimming stupid mm. amounts of time mm. every single day, mm. like, and then to have that taken away is that where your swim for mental health came along because you took a downwards turn, or yeah, is it something else that, that was? That, I mean, I think that was the that was the beginning of it, and uh, you're absolutely right, Delby. I mean, you, you do all this training, but your your whole season's defined by by you know a couple of minutes of racing one time a year so yeah. it's it's a real mm. intense and high pressure situation and yeah. you know along with that comes your funding you know there's a few things riding um you know your funding making the teams so to 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 kind of have that preparation <laughs> absolutely shattered mm. um and and to not make the team uh for a long time you know i i, I felt a lot of um, oh, how, how would you say? I, I've, you know, I've, I've, I was missing out. I, I was watching all my friends making the team, yeah. mm. realizing this dream that we'd all kind of um, had together, had together, and, yeah. and been training towards together. And uh, for a long time, I, I really struggled with that, and yeah. uh, felt that you know I hadn't quite reached my potential, and I ended up bombing out of the sport um, and, and throwing myself into my career as a result. 
Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I it, guess that's similar to what you would have seen with players getting drafted around you mm. and blokes that don't get drafted that have worked their whole life. Oh, yeah. And they miss out. Yeah, 100%. You feel, I guess we, we you still got the waffle to play in and that, but... Yeah, 100%, but you still have those aspirations. Yeah. And it does fucking hurt. Even like, um, we're like, you know, you... Sp- Mates playing cricket, Buddha, Strikey, these sorts of guys who were real good cricketers, guys who just don't quite make it, you know. Yeah. Uh, you've seen some of your best mates make it and then fuck. Yeah, yeah, it would hurt. Well, guys like Blackie, or, well, Blackie got to realise his dream, but like Shane Nelson, who's just a gun, yeah. he just keeps getting overlooked. Yeah. It's like, what more can you do? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It is, it's, some of it's luck. Yeah. Like, it is sometimes luck. Like, are you the player that that team wants at that time? Mm. And sometimes you'll get drafted and you're not the player. Yeah. And then you'll be like, ah, oh, you'll sit in that team. Yeah. Not be used for three years. And I think the Eagles missed 22 of them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, not Yeah. But what was your career? What did you... Uh, so I, I ended up throwing myself into the corporate world. So yeah. um, I, I studied accounting at uni and, um, you know, thought, mm. right, this is, this is the done thing of, you know, I'll, I'll kind of bookend that chapter of my life of swimming um, focus on my career earn money start you know working towards a house deposit all, mm-hmm. all the usual stuff and uh, for a long time you know that was that was great you know I was I was progressing was doing well mm. um, you know went on and did did things like the the chartered accounting studies um, which is is almost like a rite of path passage in that yep. uh, career path but it, it's, it's it's very intense as well and um you know, I would, I would finish a day of work and, and go home, pick up a book on tax, yeah. mm. study that for, for two or three hours. And uh, for a couple of years, I, I really, I, I didn't really have a life. Um, it was, yeah, w- things weren't really balanced and yeah. I wasn't, you know, wasn't doing that much. The in books the weren't balanced and the life <laughs> weren't <laughs> balanced. Exactly. Yeah. exactly that. So, um, and so at what point did you, because I've seen <coughs> that you, you just picked up and, Quit everything after a yeah, point and, yeah. and just left and went traveling around the world, which is uh, before that's we get to the swimming yeah. stuff, that's like that's a huge life change. That's a big risk. Yeah. You put all this time and effort into becoming chartered, chartered account, and, and you charter a flight around the world, uncharted and waters. And then, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all the analogies. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Basically, um, uh, you know, I was, I was, I was working away, and I, I don't think anything happens, you know, overnight. Mm. I, I think it's always kind of brimming. Uh, beneath the surface and um, in the space of about, I think, three months, um, we, we'd lost some guys at work. Uh, their workload got loaded onto me, so I was working even more. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'd lost a few friends to to suicide. And in the um, FIFO industry or just back home? Or? I had one, two of them were through swimming, actually. Yeah, right. Um, so one of them was one of these guys that had gone through that, um, that, that journey to try, you know, race for... Or yeah. countries internationally. Yeah. That I mean, that was really quite close to home. And another was um, a friend who was a skipper of ours for for Rottnest, uh, for the Rottnest Channel swim. And you know, uh, all these things were happening. My my family were co- um, they came out from Scotland, and you know, I, I was catching up with them, but not really spending any quality time with them other mm. than you know the occasional coffee or dinner. And <coughs> things kind of just got to a point where I, I realized, like, geez, like. I'm going down this path. Um, is is this really for me? And um, you know, I, I don't feel like I have any time. I've got all. I'm stressed out. My eyeballs. Mm. It was seeping into my personal life. I had a, a relationship breakdown, and um, I just thought, you know what, I, I need to sort of take a step back and um, take some time to reflect and take stock. And I can't do that um, in this environment right now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I I did the the sort of Sell all your stuff on Gumtree really? and uh, <laughs> buy a one-way ticket and, and went off traveling. Was wow. there something that you saw that um, inspired you to do, to do that? Or was that an intrinsic thing where you're like, I can't do this. I'm going to just fucking... Or did you see somebody or listen to something that sort of gave you that hint to like... For Branchy, it was Gary V to, hmm. to give up the thing. Was it hmm. Or was it just intrinsic because you're like, I, I can't do what I'm doing right now? I, I think it was... Um, I think we're all influenced by by what we see. Um, you know, it's kind of um, everywhere you look on social media and on telly and whatnot. But um, my my older sister and my uh, my older cousin they've both been kind of 
um, role models for me and they've both taken years out to go travel and it was something I'd always wanted to do as mm. well and I thought it was a perfect opportunity. I'd, I'd you know, had um, sort of this experience under my belt. Um, I was in a position where, you know, if I was to return to the workplace, I was quite hireable. Mm. Um, I'd saved up some money, so I thought, you know what, let's let's pull the trigger. Let's let's do this now before um, before too it's too late. And yeah, go see more of the world. Try understand, um, you know, what what's out there, and, yeah. and and go to some places that, you know, I might never go. Um, again with with my future family. So, so how was Rockingham? <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> yeah, right. How old were you when you decided that? Uh, so twenty nineteen. So I was uh, twenty eight. Nice. 28. That's. So a, I feel so like that's almost the twenty seven club. The twenty seven twenty eight for guys. Yeah. I think a lot happens. Oh yeah. Uh, you almost that's almost our maturing age, I think. Yeah, but yeah, because that's around the same time I decided. Right, I'm going to do com- I'm going to do I'm comedy. Gonna do I'm going to do, do yeah. this. Yeah, uh, I'm going to commit to it, and then yeah, you know, eight years later, it paid off. You know? mm. But mm. yeah, where was your first stop? And what you literally well, so did the gum tree, all things are for sale. But beds, 2019, beds, yeah, bed yeah. drawers, all oh, these 2019 things. COVID. So that's COVID. So you, you you launch into COVID, like so. Like yeah, what's this it, was, yeah, wow. This was just before mm-hmm. COVID, so it would have been June 2019, and uh, bought one way ticket. I had a friend's wedding out in Cyprus, so went to that, uh, and then just thought, you know what, I'd I'd like to go a bit more off the beaten path, and yeah, uh, ended up going to. You know, places like Israel and Palestine. Wow, what was that like? Down to Let's not skip over that. Mm. So was that? Yeah, was it Cyprus and straight to Israel? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So because there's a lot of bad press. Yes, you know. Yeah, and so that, and that's certainly. I think there's. I've always had this curiosity to actually see it with my own eyes. Yeah, hundred percent. Try see it from the locals' point of view. So, mm. um, yeah, it was a bit. It's a bit wild. I mean, have you guys? Have no, you guys I've never been there? not Israel. Yeah. Right. Like you go there and, um, you know. Just got everyone walking around with these like semi automatic rifles and like wow. even on the beach to be like chicks in bikinis and they're walking around with <laughs> <laughs> these uh, semi automatic rifles and you're like that's kind of hot. <laughs> yeah, strangely, <laughs> was that like um, I was with a Dutch guy and we were like Israeli army chicks. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh amazing. yeah, because when they finish school, they all do mandatory, mandatory two years. I think yeah, mandatory in, service. In the, yeah. And, um, mm. So it was it was really interesting and and great to speak to some of the locals that had gone through that and, and just getting their point of view and, you know, whether they'd been kind of caught up in the system or they're open to sort of broader, broader, or the, yeah, they have a wider opinion on things. Mm. But, um, mm. I was, it was, it was a really fascinating thing and, you know, travelled, just kind of went, I didn't really have any plan, I just kind of went where, um, wherever I felt like it yeah. and, um, you know, it was it was incredible. I mean, I ended up play, going to places like Azerbaijan and uh, Armenia, Ukraine mm. before the war, obviously, yeah. and um, visited Chernobyl, which was a bit mad. I mean, I didn't even know that was a thing. Really, that was a thing you could do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And is that like my experience when I was eighteen and I travelled for the first time? I would meet somebody at a backpackers, and they're like, oh, "I'm going here," and I'm like, "All right, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go with you there." Just go with you there. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I'm gonna go hike a hike a mountain. Do you want to come? And yeah, I think for me it was like the first time in my life that you know everything wasn't so structured. Mm-hmm. You know, I think when you go through school and you're you've, you're working towards exams, or you know, in swimming you're working towards that um, that that peak uh, meet. In, in the summer or, you know, in your work, you're working towards budgets and, and certain targets. So it was really nice to have those days where you're just like, what am I going to do today? Yeah. And, you know, there's no external pressures on um, yeah. on life. You just kind of go with the flow. What did yeah. you, where was your favourite place? And how long did you travel? So I, I ended up travelling for 10 months and that, that was... Um, you know, around Africa, the Middle East, Europe, um, South America, and then I was, I was in Central America at the time, um, working as a volcano tour guide. Ah. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 <laughs> Were you like, have you looked to your right? That's a volcano. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go back home. I mean, yeah. it was just so, what do you do? You, you, they taught you facts. Tracks. They didn't even teach us facts. Really? <laughs> I mean, I could like I, I spoke a bit of Spanish. I, that was something I wanted to learn. Like, yeah. Learn another language, but I wasn't like I was, I was by no means fluent. And you know, they just kind of 
got us to take these people hiking up volcanoes, <laughs> camping, swimming in the crater lakes. Um, but for the most adventurous people, um, we would send them off uh, volcano boarding. What do you mean? What's that? So like, um, literally just like um, like snowboarding, but you just climb up to the sto- uh, the top of the volcano mm. and go fire, down. Fire Fuck. down the side. Uh, and on what? On a sandboard or on something? A, on a sandboard. Yeah, and, right. Uh, if you come off... If you come off, you're, I mean, you're, you're fucked. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely fucked. And there's like no ambulances or anything like that. It's oh out in the middle, God. out in the middle of the country. Mm. It's just like a ute that would take you off to the local hospital. And uh, I mean, people would come off. All was the it time. down magma or down like silt? It's, it was kind of like this rocky, black rocky um, pumice scree. Yeah, pumice. Yeah. Um, but you could pick up good speed. I mean, you're going about thirty k's an hour down Fuck. this um, <laughs> volcano. So. <laughs> It was it was absolutely wild, but um, this would have been March 2020. Yeah, and cool. so yeah, you know, things are kind of kicking off around the world. The the coronavirus pandemic is spreading. Every night we would kind of watch the updates, and all the surrounding countries were starting to record cases. Yeah, mm. and then they'd look at Nicaragua, and it was like <laughs> zero. zero cases. And we're like, that's that's totally not. Yeah, <laughs> not it's not true. true. <laughs> and um, that's so that's Central America, right? That's Central. Yeah, America. my mate Sheep was there as well, and he said the same thing. During COVID, Central America, it was sweet for him. It was they <laughs> cro- crows and everywhere. Was that yeah. similar for you? It was just. Oh, I mean, no one really. Yeah, no one business really as usual. Yeah. Um, but it was it was strange, like it was it was getting stressful, and then I think everything just fell to shit within about twenty four hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, government came out saying we're going to close all the borders. If you're a foreigner, get out the country now, basically. Mm. Yeah, uh, and so you know there was there was just this mass exodus, and because we were working um, in tour- uh, tourism. Mm. Um, all of the backpackers, all the all the tourists left. Yeah. And um as a result, everything just shut down. And mm. um it was, it was it was pretty it was pretty full on. And you know, I, I remember having a chat with my parents. I was like, Oh look. Um they were like, Oh, are you gonna come back to Scotland or go back to Australia? And did you have your PR here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I I'm I have my uh, my uh, citizenship now, yeah. so that it it was an option but uh, I remember saying to them, I was like, oh, no, I think it would be kind of cool to just, like, ride it out and yeah. be one of these cool stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll ride it out for the next month. <laughs> yeah, me and my <laughs> mates, years we, later. we get an Airbnb and we, like, chill yeah. out on the beach every day. But um, things did end up turning and, and the locals got quite aggressive to to R- foreigners. Because, really? Um, because all of the industry was shutting down, all the tourism was shutting down. And um, I remember walking along the street there was um there was a blonde Norwegian girl who was also working with me, and uh, I was quite lucky. Like I kind of well, a blonde Norwegian is pretty lucky, mate. <laughs> 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 she was a bit younger. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, yeah. I I kind of like fitted in, but she obviously stood out like a sore thumb. Yeah. And, um, the locals were like, we were walking up the street, and the locals, you could just sense that something wasn't right, and they they started shouting up. You said her like. Pointing and shouting, coronavirus, coronavirus. Oh my like, god, she's not even Asian. No, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Fuck. As so, as like, because like, I because I saw it as the foreigners were bringing it bringing in, bringing it in. Wow, and, and they'd lost all their work and, and their sources of income. So I, would, you know, from that point, I was like, right, time, time, time to get to out of here. And mm. what an oxymoron! Enough. Because the foreigners that were coming in are providing tourism income. Mm. Mm. Yeah. They're yeah. mad that they're coming in yeah, yeah, exactly. and bringing Corona. It's like, <laughs> did, did much make sense during that time, nah. though, Delby? <laughs> no, oh, that's so funny that she's it. white with blonde hair and they're going, Corona. <laughs> Whereas, like, in America, they were like, do it, pick it on the Asians. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 That's so, so strange. Yeah. So, um, that, that obviously, I, I, I managed to scramble my way back to, to Australia and um, I'm, I'm glad I did. Did and you have an issue getting in? In, in here? In Perth? In, into Perth. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty stressful flying. I mean, um, I remember booking my ticket, and um, they they, they kind of brought in this new rule that if you missed any of your flights or if any of your flights were cancelled, um, you didn't get your money back. So it was it was it was this basically roulette. You're yeah. just kind of at the mercy of whether these things actually run. And I had five flights all connecting to get back from Fucking Panama hell. and Nicaragua mm. back to Perth. So. 
Yeah, it was. It was a stressful time, but yeah. thank God Not everything kind of yeah. fell to pe- um, uh, came together, and I, mm. I managed to get back to, back to <laughs> safety here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow, safety. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. we're safe anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Like. But uh, yeah, I guess um, that that's a sort of a life changing trip, though, and it changes your mindset, and uh, and mm. you see it for what it, for what life is, I guess, which is less about. The structure of fucking earning money, and you, you you go down the path of what you're supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. And then you go, well, no, nah, you well, get you to see, see it. You see different ways of life. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, you, you go to places like Asia, and and yeah, perhaps they they might not have as much money or or things like we do, but you never see them. Mm. They're, they're always smiling. Mm. Yeah, you know, you, like life's a bit simpler, and and you know, it just makes you wonder, like. Are, are we are missing we, something? Yeah. Or are yeah. we not doing something right? Or well, that's that's, <coughs> but and people still find it odd that I think like this. But I really, I'm not. I'm not saying I don't want to earn money. Like mm. I'd love to, to make money out of this and fucking whatever. And, and I recognize the fact that you need money to get by and exist, mm. especially yeah. in a, in Australia where of it's course. so expensive to live. But uh, I'm more than happy to just get by. And yeah. be happier, and go to the beach, and do this podcast, and mm. fucking go just to don't the gym. Break and even in Sydney. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> well, well, and this is the thing. So I don't want to. I, I don't want to sacrifice time. Um, where, like I can be traveling. In mm. I can be mm. traveling for that week. Mm. For for example, we could go to Sydney and break even, or we could. I could go fucking Start up a joke. Yeah, yeah, I could go see the actually. Northern Lights yeah. instead, and I'd rather go see the Northern Lights. And mm. <laughs> at the moment, I'm going to cut that off so I can go do this show, for example. But mm. so experience, life experience, and just getting by, and just fucking t- whatever. I don't, I don't have any plan for life. I don't have any plans for investment. I don't mm. care. I don't. Uh, people don't like that, and people go, "Oh, I can't understand that." But for me, that's what it is. Well, it's, a, it's a different mindset from maybe maybe our parents, where you know yes. that was the done thing. You you went went to school, went to uni, got a job, mm-hmm. bought a house, had a family at thirty whatever, and yeah, and, spent and then you the got rest of your years paying off your mortgage. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and you get to uh, 60, 70 years old, and then you got ten years to ex- enjoy it. To it. Enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. So like yeah, so that's uh, and that's why my mindset changed with work as well. Mm. Like be like I'd rather take a chance making movies and and ju- again just getting by and yeah. and that's why I did a mad Sunday session. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> gone because yeah, honestly, like fuck, I'm on two two trains of thought, man. It's that number one thought. Mm. Mm-hmm. You're only young at once, so mm. I'm like I'm never gonna be this young again. Mm-hmm. Which mm. I say young, I'm not young anymore. But mm. the flip side is. In four years' time, I'm probably not going to be able to do what I did on Sunday because mm. no one will be there to do it with. Yeah, that's a good point. And then also I'm like, but I want to be healthy. But I'm like, mm. if I'm healthy and I live an extra four years when I'm 80 mm. and I give up all this cool shit. Well, it's not, it's not living longer. It's quality of life. Quality mm. of life. So if you yeah. feel better all the time, that's well, how I – but I, I, I recognise mm. what you're saying. Mm. There's nothing mm. wrong with like, I've got the bendiest arm going around. Mm. If someone goes, you want to have a few – especially in summer. Yeah. Fucking four. If you get me about three thirty in the afternoon, nice sunny on a Sunday. sunny oh any exactly. fucking day. Yeah. If you get me three thirty in the arvo, you want a quick frothy? I'll be like, oh, bendy yeah. arm. <laughs> so what's well, the alternative? Are you yeah. sitting in your house watching Netflix yeah. or something? Like yeah, that? exactly. Yeah. Go spend your time with your mates. Well, and yeah. this is the thing. Like that, that does. Um, <clears throat> that becomes my thing as well. Sometimes I'll, I'll toss that up in my head. What am I going to be doing if if I was staying at yeah. home? Am I just going to be watching a f- repeats of fucking mm. Seinfeld mm. or am <laughs> like I mean that is a good sometimes there's <laughs> <laughs> sometimes there's uh, there, there is benefits in having rest and just yeah. shutting oh, off and yeah, resting yeah. I get that but if I've done that four nights this week well, fuck it I'm going to gong I'm yeah. going to go do five minutes and who cares if it's shit I'm yeah. just going to go do it because I'd rather just do something mm. um, but yeah there is benefits to resting and, uh, and I think Delby does burn the candle sometimes when well, it comes to yeah that. yesterday I just Again, whole day off. Yeah, switched everything off. Um, but it's spent it all day in bed. My my body's actually worse for staying in bed. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I honestly, man, like I just got a message from Fish um, as well. I might read it out because mm. I felt the same ever since that second jab. I honestly have felt so lethargic. Like, really? You remember what I used to be like, man? Like mm. I still go pretty hard. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I never tired. I was never like struggling to get out of bed. Ever since the second one, I've I've just felt like fatigued. Still mm. get a lot done, but not. Mm feel the same and then 
Fish said, ever since my third jab, I feel so tired. I struggle to get out of bed in the mornings. I've got no motivation to do anything. Mm, I need to try geez. something because I can't snap out of it. Okay, and he's asking about the tr- carnival diet. Oh, yeah. Which we, I guess we can talk about as an athlete as well. Mm. Okay. And he said, it's affected my work, my marriage. I tell myself I need to snap out of it, but I can't. When there's a new Hard Yarns episode to listen to, I have no issues because I'm excited to have to work and listen to it. Yeah. Just wanted to quickly say your pod's helping me ha- heaps with some of the advice you guys give and your guests give. Oh, so yeah. Okay. I love that. Nice that little makes little it all game. worth it for, for yeah. me. For us as well, hearing that really sort of cool. stuff. But yeah, so shout out fish, stick out it, brother. Uh, I think that's, that's always going to be the concern when you put in a mass scale vaccination or medication mm. across a whole heap of people that you don't know what the results are going to be, mm. and then long term you don't do the seven years or ten, ten years. I think it normally takes to get a vaccination. You mm. might see some long term issues. Like I don't know what the go is. That could be a complete coincidence, or it could just be something as simple as you know lockdowns mm. that, that sort of pressures and stuff like that why is there never up? positive side effects like yeah, yeah. my, my yeah. dick got two, <laughs> <laughs> two inches bigger yeah, exactly. you know my you wrinkles went away superhero movies yeah, yeah. Where like freaking superpowers no, out there that would be like that. I like, would never <laughs> complain if the vax gave me a bit of a bigger dick <laughs> took a couple of wrinkles <laughs> away I think there has been and numbers and who knows what the cause behind this is there's not not enough research done, but there has been a massive spike in s- mental health issues, mm. and it's um, and it's and it's three times as worse for men as it is for women. So there's potentially a few probably seventy percent less for women. But the the p- goes with the pay scale. There is uh, some data suggesting that the uh, the push against masculinity is ha- is playing a a role in that as well, which is interesting. I'm interested to see where that goes because yeah. there's been a spike. And it's been quite vicious. So something's happened. Yeah. Something has happened. I they're don't try, know what it is. They're trying to demonize masculinity. Yeah. Not all masculinity is toxic. Not all masculinity. Masculinity gets you to swim across a fucking channel when there's predators trying to eat you. Yes. hundred <laughs> percent. So, but, um, so you, what well, you came back from your travels and then well, when did you decide or come up with the idea of, mm. well, um, you know, what we were talking about there, like, um, the effects of lockdown and stuff like that. Um, you know, I came back, had to quarantine for two weeks. And how um, was that? There was mm. that a nice break, or was it? How was that for your mental health? Head in, yeah. yeah, I was. Well, for me, it was. I was quite fortunate. I went and did quarantine with my sister. Yeah, she lives here in Perth as well, and mm-hmm. um, it was actually quite a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay, cool. <laughs> I actually, had a great time. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember that app like House Party and yeah. um, doing all the stupid TikTok dances? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it was like, I think I even did like some app called Learn How to Do the Splits in 30 Days. Oh, yeah. nice. Did got, you do it? I oh, got nowhere close. <laughs> 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 I gave myself to like target. But yeah, um, yeah. But off, off the back of that, um, I, I just went down to the beach um, on my first day at quarantine. Went for a swim down at Sorrento uh, and bumped into this uh, old friend. Uh, of mine, a guy called Martin Smoothie. He's um, the parent of uh, some swimmers I knew. And, uh, he pretty cool he, name. Uh, Martin Smoothie. Smoothie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he clocked me and he's like, Andy Donaldson, where, where have you been? I haven't seen you around the swimming scene for forever. Mm. I was like, oh, I've, I've actually been you know, overseas traveling. He's like, oh, well, let's, uh, let's go for a swim. <laughs> and so, um, you know. Or just between the... Just uh, the between the between the groins, groins, yeah, down at down at Sorrento, so not nothing too far, but um, yeah. So you're one of those guys I fucking look at when I go for my <laughs> morning dip, and I'm like those fucking psychos because <laughs> I'll go down at like five thirty, six o'clock, mm. and it's just getting light, yeah. And I'm like sharks, yeah. Like, nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we went down, uh, and we started doing this every morning. We would go for our swim um, first day, first thing in the morning. Sun's coming up. Uh, and then we started pushing it um, each day and we would go a bit further and um, it got to this stage where we'd start at North Beach and we'd all huddle into a car. Someone would drop us off and we'd, we'd swim back um, maybe two or three kilometres all the way to Sorrento. And, and we were just loving it. It was just, it was just the best. Like, obviously, you've got the physical benefits mm. and all the endorphins, but mm. um, just being back in the water and um, having that sort of time to be alone with your own thoughts there's there's no music or mm. um, any of that sort of thing you're disconnected yeah um and i just realized how much i, I missed it mm. um, it's like you're almost like your meditation like yeah, a, yeah 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 exactly um exactly like that so um martin and i got chatting he was like well um what, what are you going to do now now that you're back are you going to go back into the corporate world and i was like well, i didn't really know 
Um, and he he said, well, look, um, I actually work in, um, I've I've been meaning to try start like a an adult swimming group, um, to try and encourage more people to get into the water for, uh, both kind of like physical benefits but mental health benefits as well. Mm. Would you want to help me? So, uh, together we started this group called Swim Clan. Um, we would get people swimming in the pool teach them technique but ultimately try help them towards um these kind of goals of theirs so you know if someone wanted to do a triathlon and was a weak swimmer we'd we'd help them from the technique point of view and help them transition into the open water Mm -hmm. or if it was just someone that wanted to get more comfortable going in in the ocean yeah um you know it, it can have quite a big impact on their life sharks are my biggest thing to get i couldn't that's the only reason i wouldn't open water swim yeah, and I, I suck at swimming as well. Especially seeing that guy the Sydney Egyptian last dude. year, or well, the Sydney Egyptian. guy, the Egyptian, oh, like the, the river. There's yeah, yeah. yeah. There's been and how does does that play on your mind? Because it must. Because I've I've been one of these people for my whole life. Mm. Beach man, always down the beach, never afraid of sharks. Mm. Even when I used to snorkel, surf, never afraid. The last two or three years, I guess it's, the constant. I know the odds are so low, but still, just that yeah. the way to go. There's just been a lot of press about it recently, yes. and it's kind of. In your face, not, not in your face, but like it is, it's there and it's mm. a, everyone's a bit more conscious about it. And it is, a, a, we're all human, mm. we're going to think about it. Yeah. Um, you know, in my swims, I, I, I do certainly, like, I'm, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's at the back of my mind. But, um, you know, what, what, there's not much we can really do. Mm. Um, Could know. jog. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you want to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I mean that's that's a big thing. Um, yeah, that's that's a big thing that that I think detracts people from getting into the ocean is, mm. is the possibility of sharks. But I think if if you can work through that, there's a lot of things that swimming can bring, and you know you can go surfing, scuba mm. diving, do a triathlon, all these different things, play with your kids in the water. Uh, and so we wanted to try and encourage people to do that and then to, to chase these, um, I suppose, personal goals and goals that they, they might have put uh, put aside or, or swept under the rug. Mm. And and as we were doing that, you know, we, this went on for a few months, uh, Martin kind of pulled me aside and he's like, um, it's all very well you kind of telling these people to go after your dreams, but, you know, what about yourself? Why, why don't you kind of revisit some of your old goals? Mm. Um and, you know, it was, it was a bit, <laughs> a bit of a like Commonwealth too. Games are done, champ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I felt, you know, with my own swim career, there was a, there was a, I still like, harboured a lot of feelings that I hadn't quite reached my potential or, yeah. um, you mm. know, I didn't believe that I was good enough to make, make it on that international stage. And, um, and that I can almost, that can make you sort of resent resentful. Sp- yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think so. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but, I, I certainly know a lot of my friends in swimming who have left the sport, and you know they won't. They don't want anything to do with it. Yeah, mm. uh, they don't want anything to do. It's a lot. It's source. It's a source of a lot of pain, and yeah, mm-hmm. um, that they're never caught in a pool ever again. Mm. Yeah, um, and I, I suppose for me, I, I didn't want that to be the case, and you know I was getting quite fast and fit, and I thought, you know what, let's. He's, he's right here. I, I should have a crack at something. Mm. Uh, what can we do? And you know, obviously, during during twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one, WA was pretty much like a fortress. It was cut off from the rest of Australia and the world. Uh, but what we have here is is the Rotten S Channel Swim. So mm. I thought, let's why not have a crack at that and and just train up for it and and really give it a good go. Uh, so that that was the plan. And um, over the over the following months, I, I got back in with my old swimming club. Uh, started training. I had this goal to work towards um, of of Rotten Est, and yeah, I was I was getting pretty fast and, and fit. Uh, there was some really good guys entered that year. Um, a couple of guys on the Australian Dolphins team uh, for open water. So I was I was by no means going in as a favourite. I was this kind of washed up, retired swimmer. Uh, but I had you know nothing to lose, and mm. I, I was just really enjoying my swimming and. Um, yeah, it, it, it turned out, so February 2021, uh, on the 20th, um, set off from the from the shores of Cottesloe, went straight into the lead, and um, ended up, 
absolutely smashing it. Really? Did you win? Yeah, what the fuck? Good. Wow, I did not know that. That's one. crazy. Yeah, so um, won won the race by about sort of seven minutes, which wow. is quite, quite sizable in in, mm. in the grand scheme of things. And uh, it wasn't a pretty day out there. The, the conditions weren't great. But um, was that the day there was a shark alarm as well, or was that the year before? Oh. I know two or three years ago. I think there I think there might have been yeah there yeah. was there was um, a year where there was um, they evacuated I think a three kilometer radius yeah mm. um, not your th- year I think it was um, I think it was a few years below but before he's too far ahead yeah <laughs> I was thinking yeah you're too far <laughs> ahead to yeah. get up yeah. 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 when you're out front I mean yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. what um what time did you do so I, I ended up going four four hours and four minutes yeah um the race record at the time was four hours so uh, oh. three fifty nine so wow. It so was, close. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it was actually not that far off. And I didn't realize when I was out there because um, I was swimming along. I had my earplugs in. Yeah. Uh, and the guys, we, we hadn't really, d- like, um, determined how we would communicate with each other. So they were shouting, like, you're not far off the record. Like, can you pick it up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I just sort of saw everyone smiling. So I was like, oh, <laughs> I must be doing all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, I didn't even know if I was, like, in the lead. I, I just had to kind of. I kind of put two and two together because yeah. everyone was chilled and, and relaxed. Um, and, you know, luckily enough, I, I was. So did you have a, a rower with you the whole time or someone on the boat? Yeah, yeah. You got So how, how it's set up, you've got the the, pad, um, the paddler that usually goes beside you. Yeah. Uh, and then a support boat as well. Uh, so my, my ex-girlfriend did the paddling and... Uh, I, I actually I shouldn't back her. <laughs> <laughs> she she t-boned me a couple of times. Oh, right. that's good. Oh. straight to the back. Yeah, yeah. straight into the side of you. Straight into yeah. the side of me. I'm like, what the hell? Are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but no, she. I mean, she did her best. But yeah. um, one of the amazing things that that came out of that, um, you know, obviously had um, had it got this incredible win. There was this just incredible journey, um, getting back in the water. Mm. You know, after years out of the sport coming back, almost breaking a record. Um, but we'd raised about, I think, around $10,000 for a local mental health charity here called the Kai Erdley Foundation. And um, it just kind of dawned on me. I was like, shit, like I've, I've just won this race. I've, I've beaten some of the best swimmers mm. in the world. Um, and I've just raised this amount of money for charity. I'd love to keep doing this and, yeah. uh, and do more um, mm. and, and perhaps see if I could use swimming as a vehicle to, to, to help others and, and also pursue a few of my own personal goals. Mm. Um, mm. So off the back of that, that's really what led to, to what I'm doing now with, with the Ocean 7 Swims. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What, um, was there a prize for um, winning the Rotter Swim? Yeah, there was, um, there was a prize. There was, um, you get a big trophy, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, that sat in my bedroom, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which was good when I took the uh, ladies' round. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But even... Uh, yeah, that's the time uh, I won. Yeah, yeah. Le- um, there, was a, there was a cash prize as oh, well. Cool. Um, $7, oh, really? so, um, oh, cool. $7,000. Oh, really? Cool. Wow. It's not bad. That's yeah, yeah. pretty cool. The, so, uh, again, going back to shark stuff, you're swimming, it's, what, 20 kilometres to, yeah, s- yeah, to yeah, Rotten Yeah, like you're swimming twenty kilometers out to sea, mm. it, it must yeah. be like, uh, yeah. I don't want to be one of those shark fucking mm. fear mongering sort of person, but it must be. Oh, well, there's something. How far, you, how, how how far down can you see? Yeah, and what d- what depth is the deep deepest it is I mean, that I think you're swimming at? I don't know. I don't know the number for the deepest bit, but of the gauge roads right down the middle where the, all the tankers go is, is the deepest part, and yeah, you, you can't see what's. You can't see what's underneath you. Mm. Um, Fuck. So Ugh. Th- there is that sort of mental aspect, and it, it is ever present. Like yeah. y- you're not going to get rid of it, but um, you know, y- you just have to kind of find ways to to be at ease with it and stay calm. Otherwise, you know, if y- if you're stressing, it's it's just going to burn a lot of energy. Yeah. Well, it doesn't change it, does it? And it doesn't change it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. What um what is the technique with open water swimming that you find different? Do you have to change sides every? Three strokes, like in the yeah. pool, or do you keep one to the side and no, you watch know, the you main know yeah, what's your yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's it. I mean, like when you think of open water, it's it's totally different to the pool. Mm. Uh, there's no lane ropes. There's there's no black line to follow. So mm. uh, usually you end up having to sight so you can go in a straight line. Yeah. Uh, if you don't, you, you might end up going off course and, and swimming further. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's probably the first thing. And then you've got the the sea chop, the wind, mm. yeah. um, other people that might clash into you. So your your strokes kind of always changing. Okay. Um, you try keep it efficient, 
Um, but it has to be adaptable. So, um, and then obviously swimming over that kind of distance, twenty k's, anything above ten k's is um, is a marathon distance. So mm. in swimming, so you know you're you're working for uh, uh, you know quite an intense pace for for a long period of time, and yeah. and your muscles um, need to be durable, and you need to have that conditioning to to keep pushing forward. Yeah, because I I can't swim for shit. I fucking hate it, and I always feel like I'm. Swimming for me is just not drowning, like constantly, <laughs> yeah. literally trying not to drown. Yeah. And even if I do 50 meters in a pool, by the end of it, I feel like I'm fucking drowning. Yeah. And I remembered like I had asthma when I was a kid, so having a puffer changed that a little bit. Okay. But what's the, what is for people that are listening that swim at the beach and for me, what's your t- say top three pointers for open water swim? Like, are you supposed to put your head down so it makes your bum go up or I struggle with like, every part of swimming mm-hmm. so like what's the main three that could help people listening i <laughs> i think um getting out like pointy practicing. elbows or like fucking well everyone's stroke is is different and there's no one size fits all mm. I, I mean i i have a pool swimming stroke so i do have the high elbows and yeah. i've tried to focus on an early catch and, and really utilizing each stroke so that i'm not just out there like a dynamo with my arms throwing around yeah so you do like the little s you do the, the little S, yeah. yeah. You, you kind of, um, instead of pulling with a straight arm, you're pulling with a bent arm. Yeah. Um, which is a lot stronger because you're recruiting lats. more of your lats and, and stronger muscles. Yeah, because I found like my top of my shoulders would burn like fuck. So yeah. So how do you, yeah. So you, you're pulling that, I mean, the S is, is what we're taught. Um, yeah. So it is, it's, it's kind of just a, an analogy for bent elbows. So yeah. you're pulling with a bent elbow, that takes the pressure off its shoulders, so yeah. reduces um, impact yeah. um, or, or risk of, of injury there. Um, I'd just say, you know, go and, go and practice out there in the elements. If you wanted to get into open water swimming, um, there's nothing better than going and trying it because, mm. you know, your stroke's going to be interrupted. Um, you know, you're going to get battered by the waves or there'll be wind or you'll clash arms with, with other swimmers. So Seaweed. The seaweed, yeah, you mm. swim into all sorts of things. I mean, I've I've been in a swim where I was in swimming in the middle of the night and I swam into a salmon. I <laughs> 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 just like, <laughs> slapped me across the face and I absolutely <laughs> shot myself. Fuck. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, like, Cause you're yeah. out there in... And, and the, in some of the temperatures... Even the neck. Some, some of the temperatures you deal with as well would yeah. be, like... Uh, could you, you do you what do you cover yourself with like gel? With the, like yeah, so what, what they do is um they, they cover themselves with wool fat. So th- there's actually a um, a company here in Perth that, that do it called Ocean Grease. So it's not you're not actually having to buy mm. wool fat. They they put like a nice mint smell to it, which is nice. Um, but that that kind of helps to retain the heat. Um, because the water temperatures in some of these Ocean Seven swims is is down at twelve degrees and. Um, you know, if you think of what our body temperatures like, it's you know a third of it basically. Mm. So yeah, you know, it's it's over time bringing your body temperature down. Uh, the normal swimming pools are around twenty five, twenty six, so it's, it's less than half of that. Mm. So yeah, it is. It's, it's fresh, and for anyone that's done ice baths, y- mm. you feel that you feel your muscles really constricting up, and the blood flow stopping uh, and not flowing to your extremities and to your muscles and. That that is a, ch- a part of the challenge. Yeah. Well, and so We're my my grandfather, uh, he would attempted to be the first man from New Zealand to swim across the English Channel. Oh no! Fucking way. <laughs> whatever, how many years ago? Forty years ago, whatever. That's a and um, he got a kilometre away, and the girl he was doing it with passed out because of oh. this, like just. I Every guess it's too cold or yeah. whatever. But uh, uh, I remember to remember seeing. Because we always me. holding you back. <laughs> um, but he uh, he did. He got to about a kilometre away, and she passed out. But oh, um, no and it was something. There was something to do with it. Was a team thing. So he wouldn't. He wasn't it. allowed to. Can't, yeah, can't yeah. piggyback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! And you um, carry her like. Sam and Frodo and oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I do recall, uh, I do recall seeing the photos, and it just, um, yeah, smothered in this like jelly stuff. Yeah, so yeah, I guess yeah. that's what. That's just what it's like being an Italian. <laughs> <laughs> just always smothered in grease. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> but even I guess so. You swum the, these sorts of yeah, channels. What, what was your first channel, or did, have you just done all seven in a row first time? Have you did you do a channel and go? I'm going to do seven. Mm. Or? 
Have well, you just the, done the, it? The, the idea, I, I first researched about the English Channel. That was what I, I thought, right, this is the, the, the sort of Everest of swimming. That's yeah. the one, if you think of channel swimming, that's the one that everyone kind of mm-hmm. kind of knows. And and that's where I discovered um, that there was seven of, uh, six other of these ones that, that formed this thing uh, called the Ocean Seven. Mm. Mm. Uh, the world's seven toughest and, and most iconic channel swims. Featuring Brad Pitt, George Clooney. Yeah. <laughs> Ocean Seven. Yeah. Exactly. So, wait, so what, are they all around Europe or just the, the whole sp- world? Wow, okay. The whole world. So you've got, you know, places like the English Channel, mm-hmm. um, Ireland to Scotland, um, to Spain to Morocco. So they are, they're all in Europe. And then you've got more, oh, let's say, tropical places like yeah. Hawaii. Yeah. Um, Japan. There's there's one between the two islands of New Zealand. Okay. Um, what about from Australia to New Zealand? That's too far. <laughs> Over the ditch. Yeah. <laughs> is that, is that, I, don't, I, I have spo- no concept. I've, spo- I've spoken to people that have um, thought about that. But uh, yeah, that one's like... Way too far. 2,000 kilometres or something. Oh, wow. So, okay. Um, Fuck. Not, not one that you would do, um, yeah. you know, in the, in the one hit. But um, What's uh, Tasmania? Is that... Bass Strait? 200 Ks, I think. Yeah. And I that's what you're attempting to do over a whole year, is that ish? Yeah, correct? more or less. Yeah, that's so the the sum of of the seven swims is is around two hundred k. So right. most of them are around thirty kilometers long. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, and they're spread out all over the world. They they all present their own unique challenges. So mm. um, we talked about the cold water. You know, none of these. You're not allowed mm. to swim in a wetsuit in any of these. So you're in oh. in there in your speedos, your budgie smugglers. Wow, who creates these rules? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> is it just whatever the channel? St- <laughs> is there like a channel community or something? <laughs> it, there, there is a community. But yeah. Basically, what happened? Um, the first guy that that swam the channel back in the 1800s, um, some army guy called um, uh, Captain Matthew Webb. Um, he just did it in a pair of budgies and a pair of goggles and a cap and. That's been the rule since. Yeah, I realise that, like, you know, <laughs> technology. That's it. Like, they, they just kept it, and, and that's the tradition, and that's right. the, the sort of, for the purists, I mean, I, I suppose the equivalent in, in climbing would be, like, climbing Everest without oxygen, perhaps. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Um, so that's 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 what the, the sort of standard rules are. There's no fins or any of that kind of stuff. Yep. It's, it's just bare minimum. Um, and that's that's tough, you know, when, when you're swimming out there, in places like Ireland and Scotland or yeah. between New Zealand, you know, when I did that swim, it was down at 14 degrees in the water and and we swam in the night, so you don't actually have the sun on your back. So well, why? Why did they? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> <laughs> why was it night time? Well, Do you choose when to swim or is it just whenever the conditions are best? It's, ah, just when yeah. the, it's a great question. Um, so it's, it's when the conditions are best. Yeah. Um, so you, you work with a local skipper, someone that knows the waters well. Yeah. And, and usually it's, it's very different to most com- uh, competitive sports. So, you know, in a running race or in a swimming race, you know, you pretty much know what event you're doing, what day almost down to the minute that you're mm. going to be racing. Mm. And these things, you know, that that's not a given. You, yeah. you have a window of seven days, for example. You have to wait for the right tides, the right sort of wind, current. right wind direction, the currents. Um, all these kind of factors that are completely out of your control. So mm. you, you turn up and, um, yes, yeah, it's this kind of... Um, period where you're, you're sitting around and you could get a phone call saying right you need to be ready in three hours fuck get get, get, your, get your stuff and let's go yeah right and so it's, it is it's like this kind of balance where balancing at where you've got to be ready but at the same time not get too hyped up because you're just going to burn so much energy how mm. does that affect your diet are you just always carb loading just in case yeah i mean you, you kind of you, you're following the the weather forecast, so you have a rough idea of of what day you're going to go, and then obviously, yeah, you you kind of take that into account and try carb load in, in the lead up to it. So this is trying to adjust for like, yeah, smaller swell some stuff like that. Yeah, guess, basically, or? yeah. Um, there's there's different kind of tides. You, you try pick the the more favorable ones, mm-hmm. um, and 
usually you don't want too much wind, or if you have wind, it's, it's behind you. Yeah, if it's behind <laughs> you, you can, you can be going, you know, rapid. Like that's yeah. that's what happens here in Rottnest. If you get a big howling easterly, mm. everyone's getting swept across. Especially the early in the yeah. morning. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty predictable, I guess, for that sort mm. of race. But for so before you Gibraltar, is it straight at straight at Gibraltar? Yeah. Like so <laughs> what's that? That's that one. I mean, that one. It's it's really tough because. The, the Moroccan authorities are really strict. Um, they, they don't want swimmers setting off when when the wind's too strong. So they, they say you, you can't go unless it's below 10 knots. And and that's tough in a place like... So what, they'll just the stop South. you from swimming? Yeah, they'll just say you, you can't start. Mm. Uh, and that's tough in a place like that because it's the kite surfing capital of Europe. So oh, it's fuck. like, you're just there and you're like... I don't even know if I'm going to actually get to swim. Mm. So, yeah. so that's for the officialness of it. But what if I was just like, uh, or you were just sitting on the beach and go, right, I'm going to go. Can they stop you? Like, I'm just going for a swim. Fuck I mean, it. <laughs> <laughs> Not really officially. Surely they yeah. couldn't. I, I mean, the boats would just get turned around. Yeah, uh, your support team. The support. support team wouldn't go, and and then they would lose their license to mm. actually go and take swimmers out. Mm. Um, and it's you know. Let's not forget, it's, it's a dangerous, it's a pretty dangerous sport. I mean, mm. sadly, a couple of weeks ago, there was there was someone that actually passed away in the, the English Channel, um, got to about five, ten k's off off the French coast, and um, yeah, they, they don't know what's happened. So what, uh, like, oh, really? Yeah. So it's you know we it's it's a f- sort of stark reminder of mm. the power of nature and that we we've got to. Be safe and and um, follow the the regulations because as in they went missing or they uh, they they died and then they had to pull them out of the water or I from what I've read he's, he's gone missing yeah um, right oh, they, so they don't know what's happened so oh. um, and the search re- search um, efforts were were oh. unsuccessful so. Yeah. yeah. Now, what about going through customs? If you're swimming from <laughs> one country to another, fuck! I didn't think about that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, what it's, do you do there? Such a <laughs> you just rock up on the beach. Yeah. You're you're like, like <laughs> passport, please. <laughs> <laughs> passport. Hold on a second. Well, it's from England down, to French. Down in my speedos. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got to hear yeah. so soggy. Yeah. You're sw- and well, you're swimming from like Spain to Africa. Like yeah. these are that's. <laughs> well, some some of them you you basically so in in Spain to Morocco we finished on this rocky outcrop and they basically just said touch the wall and, and come back oh don't right set foot on on morocco so wow. <laughs> and then what do you mean come back like jump in the boat and oh back. and then yeah, you yeah, drop, yeah, jump, oh, jump yeah, back okay. in the boat and okay uh, and, uh, yeah. no not yeah, <laughs> <swim back. laughs> they, were, they were asking me if i actually wanted to do it they were like oh we think you uh we think you should do a double and i was like it's <laughs> 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 not enough money. Who the, the world fuck said that? that? <laughs> how many? Um, how many have you done so far? Five. So I've I've done five. And five was swims. have you done any of them before, or each one was the first time doing all, it? All of them first time. Right. Um, been very fortunate to 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 get the slots to do them and yeah. and, and get the right conditions to go and and have an attempt. And uh, thankfully, we've we've made across made it across um, every time. But so, um, wh- what are the five that you've done so yeah. far? So. Did the English Channel first? Mm-hmm. Um, that that was that went really well. Set set a really quick time. I think it was like the fastest time of the last ten years, and nice. and a new British record there. So that was uh, that was really good. Um, Ireland to Scotland. Um, we came really close to breaking the world record there. Ah, I think wow. it was about four minutes off. Again, it's that four minutes. Four for you, minutes, man. man. Four <laughs> minutes at Rollo. Four minutes there. Fuck. And then in the Cook Strait in New Zealand. We we went under by four minutes nice. and broke the world record Fuck there. Yeah. So this magic four, yeah, <laughs> wow. So you you've already got a world record. Got got a world record. Guinness sent through a certificate, which was really cool. Now, did you have to hit them up saying you're attempting a world record, or did they just? It's just uh, official times. I think um, I'm not sure how it works. I mean, I always thought you had to have one of their mm. observers on the boat, but um, I think because we had the New Zealand Open Water Swimming. Associations observers out there, yeah, they just kind of were mm. like, right, it's a reputable body, yeah, yeah, just like Akana when she did her marathons, she yeah. just had to give official readings on a certain yeah, yeah. program, but yeah, yeah, so that 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 was really cool, and 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 one of the perks that came out of that, um, I think I think the time was like 
only sort of 30 minutes slower than the ferry between wow. the north and the south <laughs> island. There's something ridiculous. Just open so your business, jump on. <laughs> 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 but um, I ended up getting a, a, a wee card from uh, the Inter-Islander company and uh, I've got free ferry passes for life. Oh, oh wow. wow. Which nice. yeah, I know, it's like, <laughs> so if anything, if I leave, you know, just quit tomorrow, I've got yeah. this thing. <laughs> it's an amazing thing. But um, And then off the back of that, off the back of this incredible success, I uh, went out to Hawaii, um, swimming between two of the islands there, Molokai and Oahu. Uh, it's about 45 kilometers between each other. And uh, got absolutely smashed out there. Yeah, right. Got absolutely smashed. Um, as in, is that the longest that? swim as well? That, that's the longest swim, but, um, oh, mate, it was, it was just brutal. Um, we are out there swimming, and when we were out there, the, the weather forecast changed, and uh, there was this unforecasted storm. Jeez. And we got absolutely obliterated. What was the hardest part of that? Swimming into the headwind or something? Or was it like... Well, um, yeah, there's, I think... I mean, obviously, from a physical point of view, we were swimming into a head-on current. Mm. So I wasn't swimming my usual paces. Uh, but when that, when that storm came through, uh, the swells picked up. And, and they were about two to three metre swells. The Which wind means that the water goes up to and drops down yeah. again at just yeah, random so times. Like if you think of like your body position, yeah. it's like this kind of yeah. roller coaster and you get all this kind of yeah, right. um, mm. s- swaying movement. I just felt like I was in a washing machine just getting yeah. thrown around like a rag doll. So you would have swum more than 45 kilometres or it would have felt like you swam more yeah, yeah, because yeah. of the height of water as well or no? Um, Does that make a difference? Well, we, like were, we were getting pushed off course. So yeah. like, um, I've, I've got it on my Strava and you can just see the map and it's not a straight line. It's just yeah. like mm. someone, some five-year-old kid drawing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Five-year-old kid's drawing. Um, so you had the swell, you had the wind that picked up to about 30 knots and, and we were just getting smashed. Yeah. Absolutely smashed. Like the, the everything was just working against us. Um. But I think it's, it's it's the mental battle which is the hardest thing. Yeah, you know there were there were times where um, the guys on the boat were like, uh, over the last two hours you you've covered three kilometers. Which, wow, you know Fuck. is is not that far. So for for anyone that 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 swims, that's like taking four minutes to do a hundred meters. Yeah, whereas I'd usually take sort of one minute ten. Yeah. Mm. So it's, it's it's really like you're, you're inching along or, or some points just swimming on the spot because yeah. everything's kind of working against you. And to to, to receive that news and, and for it to not really seem like it's improving. Mm. Yeah. Mentally, that would be such Mentally. a challenge. So mm. moving forward from that, like, would you tell them not to tell you how you're going then? Because mm. what do you need mentally for that? It's, it's hard. I mean, I think I've, I've been in cases where the guys on the boat have told me lies and said, oh, you're closer than you actually are. And then, you know, you get yeah. <laughs> sort of 15 minutes down the line and you're like, mm. I thought I'd be done, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I'm not. So it's, it's kind of like this double-edged sword where um, they've got to withhold information, but also give you the right information. Yeah. Uh, so they're put in a really tough position yeah. um, where they have to be very selective with what they tell me. So what works for you? I like to know what, what what's going on because yeah. you know there's no point in sugarcoating it or, or lying because yeah you're just pushing you're kicking the can further mm. down the road and and pushing the problems you, you you're still going to have to to encounter them and, and push through them so one hundred percent the hardest thing that uh, I faced running that one hundred uh, sorry an eighty kilometer marathon the first time was. <clears throat> Misguiding how far was left yeah. in the to the to the next rest point, mm. and uh, I had an extra two or three kilometers, and it was such a Just mental fuck. It's the yeah. same one that Buddha struggled with. Yeah. Same thing. You get to a point where you think you're about to get to the end, and there's another two or three k's, mm. and, and it's just this massive kick in the balls. Fucking and kills you. You'd yeah. rather go, oh, there's another five k's, yeah. but there's only three. You'd rather think there's further. Mm. So, well, did it cross your mind to to quit and stop and absolutely, go again? Yeah, yeah. What oh, stops absolutely. you from doing it? Because you're allowed to, right? Or does that you're, break the record, you're, you're break what you're to, doing? Because um, are you trying to get the lowest time across the seven swims? Across the seven swims, yeah. Over a year. And and to do it within a year, which is, is something that no one's ever done. Oh, nice. Um, okay. So it will be a world record 
regardless, as long as you finish, oh, it will. I've got to, yeah, got to, yeah. got to finish. Uh, well, you will. So. We'll, mani- <laughs> we'll manifest it. Yes, manifestation. Well, manifest, positive yeah. force. Yes. Because uh, when did you start? January. Started in August. So August. got the next two swims. Oh, the August. last. So you two got swims. two months left. Uh, yeah, but I've got them scheduled in for July. So nice. Finish by the end of July. That that should be within uh, one year. Nice. Uh, but absolutely, I mean. I think when you're in those lowest moments and yep. everything's hurting, you're not making any progress forwards. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You, you think about throwing in the towel. Mm. I, I think, you know, I think you wouldn't be human if, if that thought didn't cross your mind. And what stops you? Because for me, I know my, my brain's pretty, like my mind, I don't have the resolve branch he's got. I would be like, nah, man, mm. I'm going to stop. Yeah, like yeah. I think I would. I don't know. You haven't really got to that point, but I just know just going for a run on the coast when I get to like ten or eleven k's, I'm like, oh fuck, man, I better stop. Yeah, yeah. You know? I think, I think, in those moments, yeah, you you can't prepare for them. Mm. Like you can't exactly train in the pool and and you know prepare yourself to be thrown around like yeah. a ragdoll. You have to live them, and I think for me. Coming back to the why, why, why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself through all this pain? What is my purpose? Yeah, mm. and I think when you have good purpose and, and a good reason for doing something, you know, you, you somehow find a way. Um, for me, you know, I, I thought about, um, I thought about the the mental health aspect and and the charity work that I'm trying to do through this challenge and raising funds for for a good cause. Uh, I thought about my family who had been so supportive all the way, all along this journey, my friends, and always encouraging, even when I was at my lowest lows and, and didn't want to keep going or if I was ever struggling, like they'd be the ones to pick me up. And I just fought to that and thought, well, they would want me to keep going. So, mm. and, and I want to do it for them. It's yeah. a common answer that the, your Find why, your why. Yeah, finding yeah. your yeah. why. Because from uh, adversity, uh, that, that always breeds success. Yeah, um, yeah. But that's where the growth is, the yeah. adversity. A hundred percent. You go through those moments and, you know, that's, that's something that's, I mean, that swim in, in its entirety, it was fucking horrendous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was also, it became one of the most meaningful sort of 16 hours of my life. And, yeah. and one experience that I'll sort of, value and, and cherish for the rest of yeah. rest of my days and if you can get through that then you can look back at something that feels hard and be like mm. well fuck man yeah i was yeah. swimming between hawaii and a storm a hundred percent i mean we mentioned it last week that contextual feeling of like ah oh, that that's nothing compared to what i've been through mm. yeah, the even this morning i fucking i did not want to get in that water but yeah. i knew how much better i'd feel for the rest of today yeah. because i jumped in that fucking freezing Dick shrinking water. <laughs> <laughs> I think finding finding the why, that's good. It, this is a good chat because it's helping me. I think you find your why, mm. and that will uh, motivate your actions. Yeah. Uh, even I was listening to Joe Rogan a clip this morning, and it was a, um, a police sniper SWAT team, mm-hmm. and he was in a scenario where he needed to shoot somebody, mm-hmm. but he had someone else's face in his scope, so he had like half an inch to make the shot. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I've been in that scenario. So now when I train my weapons, I'm not just going through the motions. I know my why is so I don't shoot that other person's face. Yeah. Uh, it's like, I, if you've never been in that, you're just going through the motions. Yeah, you have yeah, no yeah. why. Yeah. So finding your why, that's two times within the last six hours that's come through to me. Mm. So we'll fi- yeah. getting back into the gym, mm. find the why. Yeah. yeah to be well, like, yeah. And the perfect example, my why for doing all this is to spend more time with my daughter, for example, mm. or friends and family. Yeah, nice. So why would I, why would I prioritize money over time and stuff like mm-hmm. that? Yours might be to be like a, a comedian might be your goal, but why is, is that Just your goal? Lifestyle. And I like making people laugh. It's awesome. Well, that's yeah. It, yeah. I love creativity. That's awesome. And so, and then obviously your drive is um, you're, you're trying to do this one for you, probably probably for yourself. Well, I've but got, got personal goals. I mean, mm. we talked about the, the unfulfilled dreams, and I feel like I'm actually, you yeah, know, you're almost doing more than yeah. than. Uh, there's a lot of Commonwealth Games medalists, but there's not very many people that are doing what you've done. Oh. Well, there's actually mm. no one, you know, yeah. <laughs> no so one. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's. Uh, I mean, if if I quit swimming tomorrow, I I'd, I would I would feel quite 
you know, content with, yeah. with what I've done. But do you think though you would? Because you would feel you would feel, have this sense of achievement, mm. but you've you've using this as your moment, as your drive. Oh, do you I'm think you yeah. need to replace it with something after that? Like uh, I'm finding that I'm, and I see it in everyone that when you get that goal and you achieve it, and you're like, oh, that, what an achievement! Now it's like, what's next? What next? Yeah. I think I think there's. <laughs> I think there's there's a point in time where what what devalue more, you mm. know. If I was to to set some mental challenge after this, mm. other things are compromised, which I I might actually want to place more priority on. You know, I, I do want to own a ho- own a house at some point. I do mm. want to have a family, and mm. that would all suffer if I went on and tried yeah. to do some yeah. other crazy challenge of swimming. Mm. Could get a house boat. Swimming well. to... <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. but, that, but then again, that becomes your new why, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah, why yeah, do I want to have this job? It's to have this side of life, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So it is always finding the why, mm. the current mm. why, yes. I guess. The current why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the, um, the other thing was, I think the Hawaii swim... I've read in the West Australian just by chance, Branch is like, oh, heard you on the radio and I opened it up and there was a spread on you. There mm. was a shark under you in that Hawaii swim. <laughs> there was. Fuck, oh. man. What happened oh, there? Mate. So, again, that, that was a swim that we, we did through the night. Uh. So, <laughs> and I, don't, I don't think I actually explained that. So, the reason that we, we set off at certain times, we, we want the best conditions and, and they, they kind of believe that at night time, that's when the, the wind's canist. Yeah. So... In the swim, we, we set off at 7 p.m., set off the shores of Molokai, and it was it was, it was just surreal. It was this tropical island, mm. swimming off into the sunset. I mean, it couldn't have been any mm. nicer. A um, couple of hours, hours went by, and, and how they set that swim up is a little bit different. They've got the the support boat sits a couple of hundred metres away because of the, the size of the swells, so they don't sit beside you. Uh, because there's a risk that the boat would get pushed into you. So it's sitting up front, and it's just me and a, and a kayaker. Mm. And um, I'm swimming along. Uh, the sun's gone down. Uh, and I hear this uh, screeching. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, uh, <laughs> this, this, it's this, a mermaid. This, 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 this <laughs> bad, but um, it was dolphins. Oh. It was dolphins. So they, they're swimming along. They're, they're kind of going underneath me, and I'm like, my heart is absolutely racing because I'm like fuck it's like yeah but it's it's dolphins and I could kind of recognise that and I'm like fuck this is was that initial bit though were you oh, like, what the fuck I was like what the <laughs> fuck <is that?" laughs> um, but it, it it was it was just so surreal and you know people people pay to like go yeah. swimming with dolphins and here I am mm. well don't get me wrong I'm in, out in the middle of some bloody ocean yeah. but like I'm swimming with dolphins this is, this is quite how many cool. like a whole pod I'd say it was about two or three, yeah. yeah right. And I'm just going underneath the in front chatting, of you. And playing, yeah, coming right. up and, and sort of on their backs and going underneath. And really? Just, like looking at you? Yeah. And oh, I was just like... That's like, fucking awesome. Maybe they're just like... It felt like they were just checking in. That was, and that was really cool. And then they, they disappeared off for a while. And um, I, I just kind of got on with my thing. Um, maybe it might have been around 11 p.m. So the, the, the sun had... had tro- well and truly gone. Mm. Um, yeah, there's um, swimming along, and I, I noticed this kind of grey <laughs> shape under the water, um, kind of just like kind of trailing along. And I'm thinking, all right, just just wait for the the dolphin screeches. <laughs> wait for the dolphin screeches. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, like a minute or two goes by, and I'm like, fuck, where's those dolphins? <laughs> 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 I'm like, fuck, it's not a dolphin, is oh it? <laughs> it's not a dolphin, and. I was like, fuck, so my heart is just absolutely yeah, racing at this Which is point. the worst because I pick up on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's it. Like you're, you're fighting all of your sort of instincts not to like panic because, mm. yeah, they, they'd probably pick up on that. Um, so the, the kayaker had um, two shark shields hanging off underneath his kayak. So I was like, fuck. Is that the thing that uh, emits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're, they're kind of like cables and they emit this... Um, electric kind of pulse mm. that apparently sharks don't like and it, it kind of drives them away so I just like swam straight up to the kayaker and I was like basically <laughs> hugging him <laughs> I was like fucking hell yeah. but then he what are, you, are you telling them that there's a shark there I, I didn't say anything but like he he 
I think he took it for me just swimming off course. So he started like paddling uh, away from you. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking stay here. Don't like, go anywhere. So I, I, I just kind of like oh, hugged the kayak and like this, this thing was there. And, you know, five, ten minutes passed. Fuck. Um, I, I, honestly, I couldn't have done anything else. The boat's a couple hundred meters ahead. So just had to kind of endure those moments and, and if you were to physically get on the kayak does that cancel yeah. the oh yeah, that's it. wow you're, you're kind of not meant to you're not meant to touch the boat you're not meant to yeah. climb on anything like right. you have to be in the water so so just so. as close as and you can do you know what far. shark it was was it tiger or yeah. do you know um yeah i just got my handbook out because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's reef sharks here right there's the reef sharks and is there tiger sharks in hawaii or is it just I so like one of the things you'd think you'd know this going yeah. into a swim. <laughs> I try not to look oh, into yeah. it. Like yeah, I, yeah. I just don't want to. Because the sharks, yeah, they're not great whites. Because it's too is it too, too cold? Warm or something? Too warm. Too yeah. warm. But there is lots of attacks from like the they're like pack sharks almost. Mm. Yeah, I think I've seen like well, especially in like the war documentaries. It's always mm. like the the reef sharks or the makos that are big packs and they yeah. fuck you up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I, I don't know what it was. Mm. Um, I, I had a chat with the the skipper afterwards, and I was like, "This is what happened to me." And he was like, "Yeah, that was a, that would have been a shark. Mm. Just would have been checking in." I was yeah. Like, Fuck. <laughs> you see, have you, did you see anything else that's cool on any of the swims, or is it all pretty much just looking down into blackness? Um, there was what else? There was um, bioluminescence. That's pretty cool. Oh wow! Yeah, so this kind of pl- uh, plankton. Um, that that almost kind of looks like sort of gold dust. Wow. So I'd be swimming along, and this kind of like, yeah, these these speckles would be kind of going off my finger, and it, like it, Disney, kind of yeah, it kind of <laughs> felt like that, or like you're on drugs or something. Yeah, yeah. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's it's so surreal. That was that was pretty amazing. Where um, was that one? That was that was also in Hawaii. Yeah, right. Wow. Um, in Spain, um. I don't know if you guys have seen on the news, but there's been a lot of um, stuff happening with orcas. Yeah, yeah. attacking the boats, attacking boats. Mm. Holy fuck! Gaining some sentience. Didn't even think about orcas yeah. actually. So that that had been going off <laughs> literally like two days before our swim. Right. Um. It was it was all over the news, but this is back in May, and um, what essentially has happened? One of the sailing boats had um, hit into an orca, mm. and. Um, mm. It's gone off and it started like going a bit rogue and attacking all these sailing boats yeah. passing through the Strait of Gibraltar, so the, the south of Spain. And <laughs> it's, it's apparently teaching other orcas in how the area it. how to do it. So yeah. it's, it's called like Gladys. It's or like, like Planet like of the Apes, <laughs> but Planet of the Orcas. It's oh just God, mad. Yeah. So that was at the back of my mind. You, you just. You, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. If you're going to encounter it, you're going to encounter it. So I was and if one of those grabs you, you're fucked. You're, you're, gone. you're fucked. Yeah. If this thing lands, it's like... <laughs> yeah. Or if it just grabs or you in its mouth and drowns you. Orcas yeah. uh, fuck with their prey as well. Yeah. Like you see what they do to the seals? Yeah. Flick, flip them with their tails them. and oh, yeah. launch them. Yeah. One of the guys on the boat was telling me that. Yeah. Before, like, <laughs> literally, literally before I jumped in, he was yeah. like, oh, have you watched this documentary? About <laughs> you're like... Oh, don't want to know. <laughs> so, what two have you got left? So What's your mindset now? Um, so you've got. So that's yeah, that's the f- uh, five. Didn't encounter any orcas, thankfully, in Spain, but they they saw other kinds of whales. Um, Wasn't that four? Did you say? Uh, so English Channel after Hawaii. Uh, yeah, and then straight up Gibraltar. St- and yeah. straight yeah. up Gibraltar. That's five. Mm-hmm. Um, there's two left. So there's uh, one over in Los Angeles from Catalina Island back to the mainland. Mm-hmm. That's where. Anyone that's seen, is it Step Brothers? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Catalina, Catalina, Catalina wine, wine makes it. Fucking uh, cattle. Fuck <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. So, you uh, got to have boats and hose on your boats back. Get that on the playlist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then to, to round it off, it's a swim over in Japan. So it's between Honshu and Hokkaido, which is the, the two main islands. Right. Japan's got some crazy animals in their water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah, giant like squid, squid or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. like some giant squid. Or yeah, something yeah. Like that. I want to be like, just cr- don't get half food. <laughs> sweet. And do you think, uh, like, once you've achieved this, it's so, all well. Firstly, what? How much money are you trying to raise? You got a goal in mind? Uh, the, the 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 initial figure I I, I kind of chose was a was a hundred thousand. Um, we're sitting at around thirty thousand at the moment. Cool. Um, 
But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's been quite it's been certainly challenging. Like obviously, you've got all the swimming, but trying to do all the fundraising as well mm. and organizing the logistics, um, trying to get the word out there on the news and stuff. Yeah. Um, well, that's how I and I do not watch the news. Mm. I do not watch it, but Dad does, and Dad's living with me at the moment, and uh, that's the only reason I knew. And it's great to see these yeah. sorts of things um, being put out on the news. The good good news stories. And I seen it. I was like, "Fuck, he's Perth." Bang. Get him. Hit him up. Yeah, no, I appreciate um, you. So have you got like a marketing team or a media team or is it just you and the swim club? Just just myself. Yeah, right. Uh, so um, I've I've managed to to get some university students on to help with my uh, nice. social media. They've, they've actually been fantastic. Mm. Um, and, and there are guys helping, um, you know, you know, I think this is a, a journey that I wouldn't be able to do on my own. So mm. there are people that have been helping in, uh, in, in the background. But um, yeah, I think, you know, when it, when it comes to the swims, you know, I'm I'm the one that in the water. Yeah. But, uh, Are no, you documenting it in any way, like with it? Well, that was so. that was an idea as well. So we have been filming um, as we go. We we had a professional photo um, cameraman come to the English Channel and the mm. the North Channel. Uh, then I ran out of money, so <laughs> 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 so I realised that wasn't sustainable. But when yeah. are you bringing your own team over each swim, or is it just? Whoever's in the port at that time. How how it works is you you work with the local uh, local skippers and and um, because they know the water so oh, yeah. you you line that up. But um, I've I've been very fortunate. Um, a guy here from Perth, one of my teammates, a guy called Jay Prashal, um, he's been able to come on this journey with me mm. um, and and support from the boat. Um, when I told him about it f- originally, he was like, "Oh, so who's who's supporting you? Who's coming with you?" And I was like. No one. Who's yeah. coming with me, man? <laughs> Who's coming with me? Oh, I, like, I, I can hardly, like, oh, hardly afford to do it myself. So, like, mm. um, but then he was like, "Well, look, I'd, I'd love to come and join you if, so if that's all right." Um, is he paddling or is he just in the boat? He's he's in the boat, yeah. so he's you know putting together the drinks and the feeds and, mm. and passing it down and and writing messages on the whiteboard with with updates and instructions. And what? So you're swimming and he holds it over the edge or something? Yeah, so basically. Yeah, right. So. Um, Here's a bottle. Uh, I'll swim up beside the boat. He hangs it over the edge. Yeah. I'll come up and grab it. Drink. Are you drinking on the move or are you sculling water? Uh, um, <laughs> scull it like yeah, yeah, yeah. Just on, on survival. The move. So I'll, right. I'll flip onto my back and um, I can't do it here, but like yeah. uh, I'll do a couple of backstroke strokes and yeah. and have the bottle. And I am sculling, but in, yeah, a, in yeah. a different sense, Definitely, sculling, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. sculling my juice, yeah. um, and and then off off it goes. So it takes drinking about two hundred mils. So like, um, and I'll do you have a food sponsor or like a energy sponsor or anything? Maybe Precision Hydration could get behind it. <laughs> precision Hydration. Precision yeah. Hydration. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, that could be we good market for them. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. <laughs> Are they Perth based? No, no, no. no. Uh, they do like F1 England. and shit. England. Yeah. Yeah, yeah London. Oh, pre- is that precision fuel gels? They they've gone into precision hydration and fuel. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And they've got the the, the gel. The gels. 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 Yeah. 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 I've used them, yeah. Ah, well, there you go. Oh, there we there go. You go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um yeah. but yeah, they they're all mixed into this sort of two hundred mils concoction. Get get that drunk, takes about two seconds. Yeah. Uh, and then it's uh, off we go. And <sighs> Because if if you're hanging around, like some people, some people end up s- like sort of coming in for a drink and they're, they're there for like sixty seconds having a chat. Yeah. And by the time they've done that, like in some of these swims, the currents are so strong that they've they've Fuck. actually swept you back, mm. sort of a hundred or two hundred meters, and you're making up the distance you've just lost. So, um, we try be quite we we try run a, a tight ship and and try be as fit yeah. as efficient as we can. So what's your total accumulated time at the moment? It's sitting around, I think it's sitting around forty hours. So right, um, and you're trying to nut the next two out in what? What's the goal? Probably about thirteen, fourteen hours, maybe. Right, so we can go under um, sixty. Happy under, days. Under sixty. So the the existing record is. 64 hours, 30 minutes. Uh, Just, and they did it over. Combined time. And they took, um, it, it was a Hungarian guy, Attila Manjoki, um, very good swimmer. He took uh, a few years to do it. Yeah, right. Um, so, so this is fucking like groundbreaking shit. So it's it's, it's just trying, th- yeah, it's, it's <laughs> two quite 
Difficult to put it eloquently. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, no, I'm not. Some groundbreaking I'm shit. Not, I'm not too much on board, but it's, it is hard. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, you're trying to do these all within a year, but then try go as fast as possible. Yeah. Each of them, and we've had to compromise going as fast as possible in some uh, instances just to get them in because scheduling them at the right times of the year mm. is, is quite difficult and there's, there's quite a lot of demand for these swims uh, mm. would you believe it is, 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 <laughs> I know, uh, there are other uh, mental people out there yeah. I've always been interested at the mindset of someone <coughs> doing something like what you're doing and I remember watching the <coughs> the doco series or the documentary 13 Peaks have you seen that I might have yeah, talked yeah, about yeah, it yeah, yeah. where he tries to the achieve Nepalese guy yeah the Nepalese um, he was just a uh, sherp what are they, Sherpa? Is that what they're called? Yeah, he's, uh, he's a Sherpa, but I think he was in the the um, British military, like the Gurkhas. That's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he tried to uh, summit the 13 peaks, highest peaks in the highest world, peaks or, in something, the world yeah. or something within a like a six-month or yeah. three-month period. I can't remember. If it's been yeah, a while yeah, since that, I watched that, it. That's it. And like, but to his mindset of like knowing that every single climb yeah. up and down, he could die. Oh, yeah. And so you're so in a, swim. Yeah, and I was just, is this what I'm saying? Like, these aren't easy swims. These are dangerous swims, not only for just the physical um, feat that you're achieving the, 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 and the, you know, the weather things that can mm. come into play, but the animals, the fucking, the fucking it's, sharks, it's things that you can encounter. Yeah, it's hugely weather dependent. I mean, mm. you know, if you think of a running race or running a marathon, like you can go on pretty much most days mm. with the swims, like everything really needs to line up but yeah. what what do you think Which drives tough. you to do to put yourself in a situation where you're potentially going into a death def, death defying now or like a, a, de, a deadly um situation it goes back to the why doesn't it it goes back to the why yeah absolutely i mean i think for me fortunately i've, I've got quite a lot of experience in in marathon swimming now mm-hmm. um I've, I've been exposed to to different circumstances and, and know how to respond in those situations. So, um, yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm quite comfortable with that. And, you know, ultimately the skipper's not going to put you out mm. on a day that he thinks is unsafe. So th- it's really the, there's a lot of un like unfork, um, things out without your, out with your control, mm. but you know, there's, you can't stress about it too much. You yeah. just focus on the things that you, that you can. What, what sort of pain is it? Is it a full body pain? Is it a cardio pain? Is it muscular? Or is it just everything after you get mm. one of these swims? And what's your recovery like? Oh, great questions. Um, in terms of, of, of the pain when you're out there swimming, uh, definitely a lot of aerobic pain, mm. muscular. Like your muscles are absolutely screening. Because it's a full body thing, right? It's, it's a, not it's just like arms, it's yeah, everything. Yeah. That's it. Swimming's yeah. a full body swim, um, sport. Um, it's usually things that you wouldn't think of that go first. Mm. Um, mm. Like it, it may be similar to running. Like it's all these muscles that you didn't really know that you had, but like, like they're not. Flexors and stuff. Yeah, hip flexors. <coughs> like that starts to to tighten up, or your shoulder traps start to like swell up and and yeah. are, are really sore afterwards or or during. And sometimes you just feel like there's like an elephant on your back. Mm. And you just feel like you're. 100 tons weighing mm. 100 tons and it's, it's every stroke is a real you know effort to, yeah. to keep going but yeah. um yeah like y- y- you somehow find the way through and um afterwards because we're doing all of these swims in, in fairly quick succession i mean the next two swims are, are probably about two weeks apart mm. you've just got to be straight on uh straight on to the recovery mm. I th- I honestly i feel like the <coughs> when that you you're going through those really super challenging, hard, um, so moments. Cha- yeah, moments. Well, I feel like that swim, for example, uh, at the start, that's where the mental uh, courage comes in. Mm. But towards the end, when you're in that much pain, it's just you just just doing it. It's you like just it's just automatic. End, it's yeah. just like you just you're just doing what you have to. You just mm. finish. Like you're not even thinking anymore. The pain so much. Mm. But it, when it is getting challenging, you know, like halfway through to that, that's when you. That's where it really requires the the mental fortitude to keep pushing because yeah. you have you got you're clear enough in your head to go I can give up, mm. but towards the end you're so fucked and I'm only using my experience in the hundred kilometer marathon very different obviously but the pain you're going through at the end you're not even thinking about it you're just 
it's it's like you're on it's like you're on automatic. Yeah, I think I think that's that's so true. Like I think we're so much we're so much more capable than we realize, and we can push ourselves so much further beyond what our mental boundaries are. Mm. I mm. think when you get past that point, yeah, you you just you somehow go into this kind of state where you can somehow soak it up. But yeah, it's that. The real battle is when you're sort of on the fence and you're like, yes. try not to fall off the edge yep. um, and, and keep maintaining some sort of pace mm. that, mm. Um, that, yeah. that you're trying to hold. When, yeah. It's like when you've got enough clarity to understand, I can give up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But towards the end, your brain's so fucked, you can't mm. think. You're like, I'm just going to keep doing this because I don't even know what's left to do. So what, <laughs> what distance is the next two? The, the next two are 32 kilometres and... 20 I think I can't even uh, run so that far let alone swim that <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so, so between each one you'll just fucking get straight on to replenishing and rest or will you do some swims in between yeah you you, mm. you do you do swim straight off the back of it like the, the day after I think that's that's one get of all the lactic yeah, yeah it keeps the you know you you flush out the system you obviously hydrate as quickly as you can get on the proteins to re- rebuild all the the sort of broken down muscles uh, but I think I think it's also worth noting um, that you need to recover mentally as well. Mm. Mm. Like when you've put so much effort into into something like a swim uh, or a or a marathon run, um, taking the time to recharge and uh, before you get back on the horse. Like I think we always talk about the the physical aspect of things, but you know I've heard people say that. Marathons and marathon swimming is eighty percent mental, twenty percent physical. And yeah. if we're not looking after our minds and and not recharging properly up here, how are we supposed to work at peak? Mm. Uh, That's a great point. Peak performance, you know. Well, that yeah. comes down to every everything really. Just general life, we should be, you know, recharging ourselves and looking after ourselves. Yeah. It's it's even now. What is it? Is it men's health month or is it mental health month at the oh, moment? Men's men's health week. Men's Health like Week yeah. at, at the moment. Um, and I've been seeing a few tips <coughs> going up about that. And the one of the ones is give yourself time. Give yeah. yourself time to recover. Give yourself time to rest. Did that yesterday. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and But giving yourself some time. Mm. Like it's, it's – t- I'm, I'm a very motivated person. I like to hustle. I like to mm. get shit done. But I still need to – I still recognise I need time to rest. Yeah. I need yeah. to recover. Otherwise, I will burn out and I won't be able to do any of it. Yeah. And it will yeah. all be a waste. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Well, on that one, mm. I think we've nearly hit some... Uh, yeah. I understand what's that, an hour and 40? And I do have to go pick up my daughter from yep. school in a moment. But uh, you are raising money for charity for mental health. Yes, so um, just as we finish, let's touch on that. So what what is the charity that you're raising money for and how can uh, our listeners donate and help your cause? Oh, right. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm raising money for uh, the Black Dog Institute. They're a, an Australian-based charity over in Sydney. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they're world leaders in the the mental health research space and um i think for me personally um you know having had struggles with mental health and um having lost friends to suicide and so much um and and things like that um mental health was always something i wanted to to support and i i feel that you know in in today's day uh, day and age where you know it's it's such a prominent issue and Mm. it's something that doesn't discriminate anyone can suffer from mental illness um I, f- I really feel like we need to better understand it and um the black dog institute you know are a fantastic charity that are you know they're on the front foot and, and world leaders in in mental health research so i feel that you know it's it's time that we start better understanding things so that we can prevent mm-hmm. issues in in the future and and line up um or sorry, Get to a position where where the next generation are are kind of equipped and, yeah. and better sort of like a toolkit, as Greg Hire was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Episodes ago, actually, have you spoke to Greg Hire? Have you got in touch with him? No, no. Oh, right. It might be a good connect. Yeah, we'll try and hook his up. Things overlap. Yes, be a good. Um, so yeah, very good. A hundred percent. That'd be a really good. He knows uh, Blair Evans. Is a uh, she? She does she's some swimmer, work yeah. with him, and she's a. Uh, uh, an Olympic swimmer yeah. and Commonwealth yeah. Cup. So um, if people yeah. want to follow your socials, it's at uh, Andy Swimming. Andy Swimming. Yeah, nice, mm. easy to remember. Yeah. Very <laughs> nice. A N D Y. A N D Y. Yep. Yep. 
So. Um, Delby, you got anything to plug? Uh, I'll be in Brisbane for the next week. So oh, yeah. Well done on that as well, mate. Yeah. I'm just going to give you a little yeah. tap on the back. Well yeah. done. That's very. That's, no, that's no, a big achievement. About Edinburgh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Edinburgh after that, a couple yeah. of weeks after. But, um, yeah. Uh, Have you been over? To yeah, last French, year I yeah. went to check it out oh, and sort of learnt the ropes. And this year going to go... Do my version of the swim, which is have my solo shows. <laughs> Are you doing solos yeah. over there? Yeah. Oh, so, Delby. Yeah. So, uh, Big dog. Beg for my <laughs> supper. Huge. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I'm in Brisbane, but both teacher comedy nights have sold out. So if you're in Brisbane and you want to come see something, um, Who's Rhyme? Who's Rhyme? Mm. On Friday night, we've sold a huge two tickets at the moment. Oh, fucking Jesus. So nine o'clock, Friday night, uh, Daniel Delby at Daniel Delby. And I'll have a link Perfect. on my Insta. Um. I am on. You're not going to hear this in time, but I'm on an ECC tonight. Uh, I'm on it. Yeah, uh, I'm on at um, uh, what's it called tomorrow? Uh, Port City tomorrow. And Frio. Uh, uh, is Kingsley on on this Saturday? Yep. Are you going or not? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, just show up. Shins MC. Okay, cool. cool. Yep. And so and I'll be at headlining. Kingsley um, Footy oh, yeah, Club. If you want to go to local one, Kingsley Footy Club um, this Saturday, they're getting two of the girl players up to do some stand up. Oh, really? Yeah. Sick. So Shins going to MC. Cool. Um, and Mush is going to headline. Dave Tuffley and then J- oh. Jason Wood and oh, cool. Martin Darcy. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll show off at that one as well. Um, but yeah, sick. Cool. Um, that was a good episode. Patreons, uh, yeah, Shout we've out. started putting some, uh, even some just uh, behind the scenes content now, which yep. is kind of cool. Listening to what you want. Yes, we are listening to you. So thank you so much for your support. You guys are the one reason um, we've got this place, or one of the reasons. Yep. And uh, the other big reason, oh, fuck, hopefully we can announce next week. Uh, yep. With a big neon sign on that purple yeah. wall there, the big Major purple sponsor. monster. Yeah. Major sponsor that's going to be with the pod for a, at least the minimum of a year. Fuck yeah. Mm, so, yeah. cheers. Have a good one. Hey, Root. <laughs>